This is Sean and Sue's podcast on 92.7 WOBM. The Ocean County Breakfast Show with Sean Michaels and Sue Ball. Ocean County's best variety, 92.7 WOBM. Hey, it's Sean and Sue, and it's time once again, Sue, for our Jersey Shore podcast. Oh, so much going on. In case you missed it, some fun stuff from our show. Yeah, we're talking about Chick-fil-A and Panera coming to Ocean County and uh, new additions. Always good to see new businesses popping up and delicious food at both. So that's a pretty cool thing. What about dinosaurs in Beechwood? Uh, you know, we're going to find out more about this. And, yes! Uh, we seem to be getting a lot of dinosaurs. <laughs> the new folding phone no. we'll talk about. And how about mm. the Guinness Book of World Records not coming to Tom's River Darn it. on Route 166? So those are just some of the things we're going to talk about. And, uh, <laughs> of course, Sue, we're getting further into you know just about <sighs> springtime now. Hello, spring. Come on, baby, bring it. Old man winter still holding on, but uh, hopefully soon it's really going to start <laughs> you know breaking out out there springtime. So sit back, enjoy the podcast. Be sure to download the WOBM app so you could take us wherever you go so you'll never miss a moment of the show. With WOBM. 92.7 WOBM. It's Adele, 641, 34 degrees. And we've got brand new restaurants coming to Ocean County. Chick-fil-A and Panera Bread. Hey, all right. Opening the first ever uh, shops in Southern Ocean County. Uh, the uh, board there in uh, Manahawk and Stafford Township planning board has approved the uh, addition of Chick-fil-A and Panera Bread right there on Route 72 in Manahawk. And so that is going to wow. bring in some uh, new you know, types of restaurants for you to check out. Mm-hmm. Love both. And uh, it'll be great additions for, you know, Manahawk and Southern Ocean County area. I think it's fantastic. Why not? Chick-fil-A yeah. is huge. Bring it down to Southern Ocean. Yeah, it's the first uh, for both of them in that area. Oh, uh, you never had a Panera either down no, there. No, there was oh. never a Panera as well. So they'll be on Route 72 in Manahawk and Chick-fil-A will be open from 6 to 10 Monday through Saturdays, while Panera Bread will be open Monday through Saturday, 6 to 9, and Sundays from 7 to 9. Do we know where it's going to be? Is it near the theater? Is it near yeah, the... One of the, uh, um, one of the uh, shopping centers over there. there. Yeah. I mm. believe uh, maybe the Kmart Plaza there, okay. the old where the Good. old Kmart used to be. That's near That's the where theater, I heard then. rumors sure. of it you know, going, but it will Perfect. be along 72 there. And uh, Chick-fil-A and uh, Panera mm. coming to Southern Ocean County. So you can look at our app. and Booming along Route 72. Yeah. I will tell you what, it's amazing. And mm-hmm. more and more people are moving down mm-hmm. to Manahawkin, the Barnegat area. I think it's fantastic. An attorney Great for area. the group that owns the property says mm-hmm. uh, the timetable for opening would be as quickly as humanly possible. <laughs> So okay. I guess if they could break ground, mm-hmm. they'd love to get it up by summer. I don't know if that's possible or not, but boy, I tell you, you want to be uh, looking at a lot of traffic. Uh, 72 becomes, you know, so much uh, more, even though it's usually got a lot of traffic, but even in the summers, right. it, it even fills up even more. So mm-hmm. we will see. Go on our app and click on the cow and find out how you can eat more chicken in Southern Ocean County with WOBM. <laughs> Uh, 92.7 WOBM with One Direction right now 34 in Tom's River Sean and Sue and talking about eye strain and digital eye strain something that has become more and more an issue for folks Uh, we've got a story you can check out on the WOBM app all about it 65% of American adults suffer painful symptoms of digital eye strain and he says, uh, "Painful." Yeah, huh? yeah Dr. Wow. Joseph Calderon was interviewed, and uh, from Better Vision, New Jersey, mm-hmm. and they talk about things that you can do to, uh, you know, help alleviate some of the problems of staring at computer mm. screens, which so many folks have to do these days. He says one of the things you can do is use a twenty 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 rule. Every twenty minutes that you spend, you know, on the computer. Sure. Spend 20 seconds looking at an object at least 20 feet away. This will rest the muscles in the eye and uh, give you a chance to let the That's eyes interesting. sort of get some, uh, you know, relaxation. Also, he suggests using anti-glare filters on your computer, mm-hmm. like the matte films uh, covers that they have for computer screens because it can minimize glare and reduce the effects of digital eye strain. He also says that adjusting the brightness on your computer can help too because the brighter, the more you squint, which is a major contributor to headaches, he says. 
Mm. Also, you should try to sit about 25 inches. So that's about two feet away from your computer screen if you can. Really? Yeah. Then I won't see a thing. Yeah. He (laughs) He says the further away you are, the less work it is for your focusing muscles. I will tell you this. I had to get um, Abby glasses, actually, recently. Mm -hmm. Um, And the eye doctor told me that children her age, because of the phones, there's a lot of strain Mm -hmm. in eyes. So, I mean, for reading, she squints an awful lot. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's all because of the phones and the computer screens. And he sees it way too much in teenagers. They also mentioned uh, changing the font. I think I have the font bigger on my phone. So it makes it a little easier. Huge. You know, so. Huge, Sean. It's uh, less squinting. It's like I'm blind. Um, less squinting if oh. you want. You know, the bigger fonts make right. it a little easier on your eyes to, to pick mm-hmm. it up and not have to focus as hard. Yeah, but people giggle when yeah. they see mine. But if that's you, all right. If you go to our uh, app, you could just click on the digital eye strain story. They're all part of uh, Eye Strain Awareness Month and, uh, you know, get details. So it's all there for you. Just mm-hmm. simply one click away with the WOBM app and you know, make the font a little bigger. It'll make it easier to see. 92.7 WOBM, Sean and Sue with the American Authors on this Tuesday morning. Chilly one out there. You got a little bit of wind out there. 34 mm-hmm. degrees. Feels a little colder than that, I guess, with the uh, wind chill factor. The sun will be out soon. Oh, it looks like it's trying to get yeah. out right now. Hey, mm-hmm. we're talking about dinosaurs. Did they dig up a dinosaur in Beechwood? What's going on, <laughs> Sue? Well, you know, Bayville is huge. The historic... Uh, you know, they just redid the dinosaur in Bayville mm-hmm. right They're along moving it to Beechwood. They are not moving it, oh, okay. but they are building it. They're building another dinosaur right down the road, Route 9 in Beechwood. And I have to be honest with you, um, it's at the Sandcastle Diner. Okay. Right at the sign there, mm-hmm. uh, Route 9 in Beechwood. I have no idea. That's why I wrote the blog. Please tell me why this dinosaur is being built at the Sandcastle. You know, the Sandcastle Diner. Maybe to bring, you know, awareness to the, uh, you know. The, the dinosaur, dinosaur in Bayville? You know, just like the Bayville I one I don't know. It's, it's literally maybe, what, two miles from Bayville, to, you know, to the Beechwood di- a dinosaur. Here's the deal. That one is more of a stegosaurus in Bayville. This is a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh, really? Yeah, so two different dinosaurs. Wow. This one's a little smaller in Beechwood because it's right at the Sandcastle Diner sign. Mm-hmm. So I would love to know. I was wondering if we could get any calls on this. Wow. Beechwood residents, you have a dinosaur now, and I want to know why. The blog is up. Please let me know. You can see pictures of it. It's pretty cool looking. Mm-hmm. Right? Very nice. Look at the teeth. Yeah. Don't eat all my pancakes at the St. Castle Diner. (laughs) But Beachwood now has a dinosaur. All right, we'll be back. We'll take a look at news, traffic, Mm. and weather next on WOBM. (laughs) Turning to technology today, did you see Samsung has revealed its new folding phone? Have you seen this new phone? Do you mean like an old flip? Kind of like a new take on oh the old goodness, flip. I love the flip phone. All right, now remember. This excites me. All right, so what you do is picture your phone yeah. in your hand, right? Mm-hmm. I am right All now. Right. I'm holding now, it. Now you picture a second phone next to it that is connected in the middle, and it folds together. So it folds up and not down. No. It, like a book. It folds like a book. Okay? Yes. Mm-hmm. So when it's folded, it's about the size of a regular phone. Not quite as fun. Now when it opens up, it becomes a tablet. And it'll have a 7.3-inch huh. display. That, In other wow. words, the two phones, when they open up, become one big screen. So that's almost like, what was that, like a Palm Pilot or a, uh, almost like one of those. Remember them? Yeah. Remember those Palm Pilots or, I don't know. I like the regular flip phone. I thought you yeah. meant it was going to go the normal way. No, but... not a flip like that. It mm. folds open okay. and becomes a big tablet. Mm. And then it folds back up if you Who's want to be like a regular this? phone. This is Samsung. All so right. this is the droid. This is a droid, yes, mm. an Android product. Mm. Uh, Samsung, it's the folding phone. It opens up to a tablet, closes back up to a phone, although it'll be thicker, though, because it'll be two phones closed together. So it'll be thicker than your average phone. Okay. I the price know. tag for this. Tell me. New phone when it comes out, $2,000. What? So start saving your pennies, kids. So wait, it's like a mini tablet, literally. So that's what it is. It's a, mini. a folding phone, mini tablet, whatever you want to call it. But, but aren't phones already like tablets? 
Not that way. Okay. That's a big one. We're W-O-B him. <laughs> As we up. get set to head out to the highway, Nancy's in with us. I just wanted to say we did a lot of hiking while I was out in California. But the funny thing, and we took some pictures of it, too, because I just thought it was just like, wow. Okay. We'd go to all these different trails, and we would take their dog out and everything. Yeah. But every single park and every place we went to had two signs up at all the different places. <laughs> what did it say? It said, watch, careful, Mountain lions. mountain lions, yeah, and what? the other one was careful, keep eye out rattlesnakes. Mm-hmm. And I said to my son, I said, "Now, uh, rattlesnakes and mountain lions, are we sure we want to do this?" <laughs> they said they've never run into any, but I guess they do that everywhere. No way. Yeah. Is that like a size of a fox, or is that bigger? No, mountain lions bigger. Okay. Oh my goodness! And they're running free. Well, I guess in well, some yeah, spots they're in the mountains. Yeah. Well, yeah. mm-hmm. oh no, oh no, I had no idea. Like That's a big crazy. cougar. Yeah, how about you don't hike when you go visit him next yeah. time? So so he told me, he said, just look for eyes. And he said, if you hear any rattling, he said, just let me know. But luckily, oh, nothing. Oh, so. goodness I've sake. Had, I've had signs about uh, grizzlies. Oh, really? That's I haven't, I haven't hiked with with grizzlies oh, yeah. yet. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, but uh, mountain lions are a little scary because they're <gasps> they're. Stealthy. You know? Yeah. <laughs> they're fast. Is that what you see in a attention. zoo? What, it, what does a mountain lion look like? A regular lion? A what? cat? Yeah, like a female like, lion, kind of. Okay. You know, not With the big no mane. mane. No, yeah, no big so mane. More, it looks almost like a leopard-like. Like a cougar. Like a cougar, okay. Yeah, plain tan kind of thing. Wow. But it was just funny to see those signs, because usually we it's have some. You know, here we have signs that says ticks. You know, that's pretty yeah. much the end of it. Or deer. Yeah, or, yeah, or like watch for deer. deer. Like, like, they, like, don't, they don't usually ducks. have the signs out for deer. Yeah, like. we're really not worried about getting attacked by deer. But, yeah. Or turtles. Turtles. Crossing. Yeah, turtle. For, yeah, watch for the turtles. But no, mountain lions and rattlesnakes. Yeah. Don't so you appreciate, though, where you live and oh, yeah. you know, the I, things I, that we I do like have here? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very free of, uh, of wild nice. cats and uh, <laughs> and venomous snakes. Jeez. Anyway, Nancy Remy, the bears would be scary, too. That would be yeah. a scary yeah. one. So you know, I've, I've only run into brown bears. Yes. But, uh, but not the... Uh, the nasty ones. I hope you mean the zoo. Because, I mean, no, I remember no, one no, time no, we were no, hiking no. up in North yeah. Jersey and a guy County, says, yeah, There's a bear up ahead. Place. And my wife said, Well, this is where we're turning around. So. <laughs> oh. You didn't make a lot of noise. It. I did not. No, I did not want to see it. I thought, Watch that on the mm. news or yeah, whatever. That's crazy. Anyway, out to the highways. Nancy Remy's in this morning. How are we doing out there on the roadways? So we've had uh, a pretty calm go. Right, right now, 40 in Tom's River. Nancy Remy is with us. This kind of ties very nicely into traffic this morning. Real quick, I wanted to tell you that the Route 166 road construction that we've been hearing about for quite a little while, Mm -hmm. the Guinness Book of World Records, it was submitted to them to be the, it it has been rejected by the Guinness Book. It didn't make the grade. It didn't make the uh, cut, and the (laughs) folks there in Tom's River, uh, you know, originally did it sort of as a joke. You could check out the story. I just put it up on our uh, website and our WOBM app. But uh, it won't be in the Guinness Book of World Records as the longest quarter mile piece of construction uh, in uh, the world. So only in New Jersey. Yeah, only in New Jersey. But they try to, you know, put a little humor into what has been a very non-funny topic for many folks in Tom's River. Oh, it's very stressful for the businesses there and everything else. I'm also asking the question because they say now that it'll be finished by spring. I think spring is now 28 days away. Do you think this project will actually wrap up by spring? So, whoa, whoa, Nancy. (laughs) That wasn't, I was just throwing that out there. I'm just throwing that out there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, You know, I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, uh, DOT officials say that they should have it wrapped up by spring. We will see. Okay. Check out the story. Download the WOBM app. Right now, let's head out to the high Ways it's the Auto Lenders Ocean County Traffic Watch. All right, and we. It is cold out there. That's one of the biggest things yeah. when I got back from vacation. <laughs> I, uh, you know, is the cold. That you uh, were on the beautiful West Coast, where it is yeah. pretty much warm. San Diego is where your son lives, right? Yeah, there was a couple of chilly days. You know, when I say chilly, we had like a hoodie on and uh, you know sweatpants sure. or jeans or something. No winter jacket or hats. No, no. There were some days we were even in shorts, but uh, you know it just depended. They they've had an unseasonably wet. And mm. uh, chillier uh, winter and early spring out there, but nothing like this. I mean, 17 degrees. I mean, they don't they don't even know what that is. <laughs> but um, it was a funny. The Wish thing, I didn't know what it was. Yeah, either. true. It is true. But the funny thing about it, you know, we we think that we don't have accents necessarily mm-hmm. when we, we talk to each we? other. We don't feel like we yeah. do. 
you know, especially, you know, here in our area, we may not have as strong an accent if you live further north or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But when you go out to another place, you know, that's so different, like the West Coast in San Diego, you know, when I go in and I sit down and say, I like a black coffee, you know, and they're like, oh, what? <laughs> I want coffee. So they didn't, they, they think you they, have an you know, accent. They're like, oh, my God, you, wow. want, you want coffee, you know. It, well, how do they say it? I you guess just like say co- coffee. You know, coffee, you know, and, um, you know, but we say coffee. And coffee. I don't, I don't yeah. re- realize that I say coffee, like C-A-W-F-E-E. Mm. You know, it's sort of coffee. I want a oh, coffee. Oh, that's funny. Also, can we get a round of waters for everybody? <laughs> Because we don't, I say water. Water. Yeah, yeah. W A D E R. Water. You know, and they're yeah. like, you know, would you, you know, they're like, would you like water? Uh, you know, uh-huh. would you like, would you like bubbling or, Wait or a tap? Second. Water. Water. You know, they're like, oh my water. God, would you like water? Oh, you know, that's and I'm like, funny. no, we want water. And, you know, it, it would not bubbles. I don't want bubbles in the water. Just plain. Do you, you think know. we're like lazy with our speaking? Like water. No, it's just different. Coffee. It's just East Coast. Okay. It's just East Coast. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the things that, you know, I, when we talk about traffic, and we have traffic at times here. Oh, horrible. But I want you to remember the something. Summer? Yeah. You don't know traffic till you've been out there. No. <laughs> because the traffic out there, they live their lives around the traffic patterns. Every day? Every I mean, Monday is there through a... Friday. So they during live their the work. lives. Okay, so it doesn't change like summer, no. winter, fall. Oh, wow. Because there were times we wanted to do certain things. And they're like, no, we can't do that because of the traffic. <laughs> and we're like, what? What do you mean the traffic? What? In the morning going in one direction, it is eight lanes of bumper to bumper uh. traffic. And at a certain point in the afternoon coming home, it is eight lanes of traffic, <laughs> bumper to bumper. So what are you saying? Our little parkway is nothing. When we have traffic <laughs> here, just remember, it can be a lot worse. And, and wow. San Diego isn't no even idea. as bad as L.A., but they have so much traffic and so many lanes. And what's I, the highway number? Uh, there's five and okay. there's eight. Wow. Interstate five, mm-hmm. interstate eight were two that I remember offhand. Another thing, too, is they can make U-turns all over the place, <laughs> which here you would be, you know, you'd be in so much trouble doing. They just turn on a dime. They'll stop and they'll <laughs> make a left and, the room and spin around. So it's very different. It's very mm-hmm. different. The one thing I will say, they're very polite drivers, though. Oh. When you need to put your blinker on and get in because you're stuck on, you know, you're in the first lane. You need to get over to lane six. <laughs> you oh put your blinker goodness. on. They let you in. So there's no birds flying. They let you in. Yeah. There's no hand. There's no sign language going on. (laughs) Yes. I heard one horn the whole time I was out there. Wow. One time I was a little bit out, a little too far, and somebody said, just beep, you know, let me know that I was So someone that has never been to California as Mm. myself, I've been to Vegas Mm -hmm. and the Grand Canyon, but Mm -hmm. never, you know, (laughs) the East Coast, like the West Coast. What is, are they relaxed or yes. what's their personality yes, it's very, like? very relaxed so we're more rushed yes. here of course we are more rushed and the funny thing mm-hmm. is they have more traffic and everything so it doesn't make sense but they're very calm about their traffic they just sit in it wow and they let you go and if you need to get in you can cut them off they'll be like hey have a good day man mm. you know so <laughs> <laughs> it's just a very different lifestyle but the traffic though is is crazy out there mm. It really is something. But, the, you know, the funny thing with the accents, like I say, like coffee and water, they be a little different or whatever. But, yeah, very relaxed out there. Nice. And uh, Seems like a nice place. Yeah. You know, and everything is, like, they don't have heat anywhere, too. So, like, when it was chilly at night a little bit, we'd be like, you know, where's the heat? But they don't really, you know, there's not a lot of need for heat. They don't have heat? Well, they have it, but it, there's not a lot of need for it, oh, if no you know way. what I mean. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. So, and usually they're even warmer than they are this uh, particular winter. But it was a great time. We had a good time. My son doing very good. They have a nice place. They keep it very I'm nice. So proud of him. And uh, but it's just it's just very busy. I'm glad to be back home, <laughs> because here in Ocean in Monmouth counties, I know it's busy here. Mm-hmm. I know sometimes we get like, oh, you have so much traffic. You know, it's not that much traffic. Wow, it's not that much. Okay, mm. there we go. And it's just constant. Like everybody's just going all over. But so many cars, so many people. Do they have Walmart? They do. Okay, good. Yeah, they do. They Michael's do. Craft Store? Yeah, they did. Any Wawa's? Uh, no. No! No Wawa's. What is their Wawa out there? Do you know? 7-Eleven. 
Oh, okay, they have seven AM, moments. PM was another big one. <gasps> AM, PM, we had them in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Wow, oh. okay. And of course, you have to pump your own gas, so that's another thing. Mm. And speaking of gas, they're paying about a dollar a gallon more than we are here. Oh. So gas is more expensive out there as well. So bottom line, let's be happy and enjoy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and the beaches, I like our beaches better. Oh, they're softer, Their right? Their beaches are here? very yeah. picturesque, but there's a lot of cliffs and a lot of rocks. <sighs> mm-hmm. So, I mean, here we have it's nice not a smooth, soft flat, walk. We yeah. have nice flat beaches and and. and and so forth, but there it's a lot of cliffs, a lot, a lot of you have to you know climb and, and and do things to get down. I'll be posting more pictures of some of these Good. surfers Can't out wait. there. Uh, a lot of folks surfing, but the, even the surfers had to climb down like rocks and, oh and, and, and cliffs and everything to get down to the beach. It's just work. So it's. <laughs> It's a lot of work, Sue. It's a lot of work. So I'm not a West Coast girl. One time it took us a half an hour to get to the beach from the parking spot because you have to go down cliffs and, and stairs oh, and no. you have to climb. Do they have elevators? You know, and, and ropes and, and, and everything else. Yeah, so, no. But we had a good time. It was a lot of fun. Hey, we'll come back. Speaking of the traffic, we will check it out next on WOBM. When's the last time you had a sticky bun? <laughs> Well, what are we talking about here? Meaning, when did you sit in gum to have a sticky bun? Or do you mean like... um, What do you think? I didn't think that there was a question as to what he meant. He (laughs) meant like a donut. Oh, I totally went with you know, like Cinnabon, last time I stuck yeah. in Sticky gum. bun. I, I, I didn't um, think I needed to explain. Gum. You know, Sean, you didn't think this was going to be controversial, did you? <sighs> Well, the way he said it. I thought it was it. one of those, you know, I, I had one with a cup of coffee he a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> he didn't just go into sticky bun. He went, when did you have a sticky bun? What? Sticky bun. Mm-hmm. Just did a story with a little bit of video, uh, you know, on a recent trip to uh, Southern California. I wanted to see for myself. You know, it's a story we hear about every day in the news, mm-hmm. and that is the wall. The border oh, yes, between Mexico yes. and the United States. Mm-hmm. We hear about it every single day in the news. I wanted to see it for myself to say, you know what? It's a piece of history, piece of what is going on currently in the world. <gasps> you took pictures. And we went down and we oh, uh, traveled down to the wow. border uh, right there in Southern California. Yes. Uh, the last town in the United States basically is a town called Imperial Beach. And that's the last town in the U.S. before you travel into Mexico and into Tijuana. (laughs) There is a national park right there, the Tijuana Estuary, Mm -hmm. which is on the U.S. side. And we didn't go across the border. We stayed on the U.S. side. I would imagine they don't allow you to. Well, you can. You can go across the border if you want. We just didn't want to. Mm -hmm. Um, But, um, you know, I've been to Mexico before, but I just we just figured, you know what, with all that's going on, let's just stay on the U.S. side. Makes it a lot easier. Yes, <laughs> you know, thank you. There was any problems. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, this national park, the Tijuana Estuary, it's a great place to go. You can hike there. There's lots of uh, vegetation there, you know, cactus and things you don't see back home here. There's lots of wildlife, uh, a lot of birds out there in the estuary as well, because it's right on the ocean. Uh, the Pacific and the Tijuana River is right there as well. So there's a lot of birds and wildlife and so forth. And uh, there were photograph groups out there, photography clubs and so forth out there. And uh, we had a good time. We did a little hike out there, and I took pictures. You could see the wall from the U.S. side right there at the uh, you know estuary. They have a welcome center with the history of it and a lot of information and things, and the park rangers what, told us about it. Yeah, what was it like around the wall? What could It just you... looks like a wall. It mm-hmm. looks like those big you know, steel panels or whatever that you see, and you'll see in the pictures that I put up mm-hmm. of the wall as it crosses down Is over the hills and everything. Is there any form of people around it i mean did you see any action going well, on well i didn't see anybody no i didn't see anybody trying to sneak across the border right but uh you do see the border patrols out there in fact they really don't like u.s citizens to get on top of the border you're not really allowed mm. to go to you can't just go to the wall and like you know sh- you know bang on the wall or whatever okay um they, they have that sort of cordoned off and there's you know patrols land patrols there's also navy helicopters constantly patrolling up and down uh, through the area, and so I got some pictures of the helicopters that were there as well that go back and forth across the border, but a lot of activity there, helicopters everywhere. And um, you can see it, though, if you are in on the U.S. side there at Imperial Beach, and the uh, wall goes down across and actually goes out into the water, uh, you know, so that it goes deep enough. I guess people would, you know, not risk swimming, trying to swim through the ocean part of it or whatever, but they have the, you know, the different groups of border security people. You could see them in their trucks going up and down. They have like dirt roads that go along the border there. Now that is interesting. I mean, you know, you were that close, not even thinking 
Yeah. Mexico's right there. You know, and then I saw a special on the news last night, and they were just showing people trying to get across the river there and stuff. And I thought to myself, wow, you know, we were very close to what is a very, you know, active spot. More people, so you know, in the Texas border area, the Rio Grande seems to be a problem. But the Tijuana area has, you know, problems as well, I guess. Mm. But it was just interesting, just a piece of history. I wanted to see it for myself since I was so close you know, and we kept watching, you know, as we were driving down because um, uh, not everybody that was with me had their, you know, passports. And my son said some of his friends said that one of the things that's, you know, a little tricky is as you get very close to the border, once you're like in a certain spot, it's like you, you have to like, cross the border to get back over. You right, know? Right. And I thought, oh, boy, we're going to have to leave, you know, some of the people we're with behind because you know, they don't have mm-hmm. paperwork. So we'd have to have left them in Mexico. Wow. Well, that wouldn't have been fun. No. No. So we Jeez. made sure that we got off the right exit. Oh, so we did sake. end up, you know, crossing into no man's land there where you're basically going across the border. But just neat because we don't live near a border of any kind. I mean, I've traveled north of Canada, but it's quite a ride. But we were right there. I mean, to see another country just, you know, hundreds of yards away is just kind of a, uh, you know, an interesting perspective on things. So and you could see Tijuana in the background there and the All wall right. and, uh, and then on the other side there. So. Cool. But it was interesting. If you want to Very see, very interesting. The, I mean, uh, I've, I've never seen it up close the way yeah. you were. Yeah, we see it on the news. Yes, but I mean, that's pretty cool. Well, if you want to see, uh, know the estuary there. If you ever thought about going down to that area, you can check it out. Uh, I've got video and pictures up there. No, Part of I don't think so. I think I'll block. stay away. You think you'd stay in <laughs> the U.S. Sue? I think I'll stay away from that. Very yeah. nice. <laughs> you can uh, download the app and just click on the little sign Tijuana right there with W O B M. So we're talking today a little bit of a stroll down memory lane. Yes. I, I did a little blog this morning all about, we were talking, my wife and I, about the Columbia House Record Club. You remember the deal. You'd get eight albums for a penny. Yes. And I go into how, you know, sure. there was a lot of confusion, you know, each month. <laughs> if you didn't send in the card, either accepting or rejecting the selection of the month, they'd send it to you anyway. You'd get albums you didn't even want. But, wow, when you were a kid, you'd be like, wow, you get eight records. Mm-hmm. And these were records now on vinyl. That you could get. Wow. And you'd get like eight of them for a penny. So it was a big deal. This was back in a day where, you know, you couldn't order anything online. Sure. And, you know, you'd have to physically go to a oh record shop goodness, or whatever. Oh, my goodness. I waited for those records. Yeah. So yes. this was a big deal. So what I decided to do was write down, I figured out what the eight were that I ordered back in the day. One of them, of course, Cheap Trick at Budokan. That was on my list, of course, the iconic live album from Cheap Trick. Also, listen to some of the names here, Sue. Kiss, Rock and Roll Over, Foreigner, Double Vision, The Cars, their original, Van Halen's original, Sue. Do you remember The Knack? Get The, the knack. knack was a big one. Hmm. The Kinks, One for the Road, and Led Zeppelin in Through the Outdoor. Those wow. were the eight albums that I ordered from the Columbia House Record Club. Oh my gosh! Now I only remember, and we got them for a penny, like you said. Yeah, you get eight of them for a penny. I remember three yeah. that I was waiting for so long. Yeah. Um, it was Charlie Brown's Christmas, the album. <laughs> oh, I couldn't wait. Well, we're both I was on, waiting. We're both going a different direction here. Okay. Oh, totally. Yeah. Sheena Easton, oh, Morning boy. Train, nine to five. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> waiting for that one. Yeah. And Belinda Carlisle, Heaven Is a Place on Earth. Ah. Oh, that just brought back good memories. And it was funny, too, because Those like I said, three. if you didn't send back the card each month, yes. you would automatically get billed for that album that was that selection. I remember one time, for some reason, it was a weird thing, like Olivia Newton-John's Greatest Hits. Nothing against Olivia Newton-John, but just right. I, I didn't want anything to do with that. Yeah. And then you were stuck with it. And you were like, yeah. oh, you know. But do you remember being a part of the Columbia House Record Club and getting your eight uh, records. Now, as it went on, it progressed. First, when sure. I was doing it, it was records. Then it was eight tracks. Remember, you could get eight tracks. And then it finally went to cassettes. Uh, you know, so. But anyway, some memories there. You can check out my list. And if you want to add yours, what uh, albums you remember getting with your Columbia House. I can't believe you ordered Peanuts, Charlie oh, Brown. yes. That That's was funny. big. It that was mom's funny. favorite thing. She waited, I think, weekly or monthly for all her Barry Manilow. That's all she wanted. Yeah. And she'd be a happy girl.
Barry Manilow on a record. You Funny know, thing cool. about it is, all those albums I mentioned, the different groups, I still listen to them today. So there you go. Hey, <laughs> check it out. You can check out my story. Ed, your comments of memories of the Columbia House Record Club and your eight albums for a penny. Check it out. Download the WOBM app. So last night I got a chance to be a part of the uh, Tom's River Downtown Think Tank. Oh, tell Once me again, about that it. they did. Mm-hmm. And what I think is great about it is, and there was a point made at the meeting about how, yes, everybody is an individual business owner, uh, you know, downtown, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and individual citizens and so forth. But when they come together, it, it makes them stronger as a because whether they're individual business owners and they're, you know, they're obviously worried about their you know, own business or whatever. Mm-hmm. They're stronger as a group coming together with solutions and I ways to improve mm-hmm. things. And I think that more towns are beginning to have these type of conversations about what is best for their town. Ta- now, obviously, this is, you know, for here in downtown Tom's River. But I think it is great when you can get these collectives together because together they're a stronger unit than if everybody just sure. tries to, you know, sort of function on their own and, oh, and, and not know what the other person's doing or thinking or anything downtown like that. Downtown Tom's River works very well in a team. Yeah. Right? Yes. I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, and as I said, you know, they can't think of everything. So what is great about having these think tanks, people bring questions to the table or ideas, whether they fly or whether they don't. You know, there's no bad ideas, but some that might stick, some that might not. But mm-hmm. the, the idea is that they can't think of everything. So you might be able to come up with things that, oh, wow, you know what? That is a good idea. And Never if you live that, close you know? to Tom's River, if you come to the town, yeah, um, big changes are going to happen, I believe, downtown. And it's going to be phenomenal yeah so it's always good to be mm-hmm. a part of the community glad to be a part of it and uh, hopefully we see more cool. of that around the shore yeah, wobm good cool. morning sean and sue on this friday morning playing the morning coffee contest who do we have with us it's patty from tom's river no one will play us on the radio we need to get experiments hi patty what do you hi. think patty what is it oh my i hope i'm right is it queen the Bohemian Rhapsody movie? It is Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> wow, you're excited. Guess what? You're going to New York I'm City. <laughs> Yay! You're going to see Hootie and the Blowfish and the Bare Naked Ladies at Madison Square Garden this summer. Congratulations, oh Patty. Thank you. All awesome, right, hold on the line. Boy, awesome. she's excited. Thanks for listening to Sean and Sue's podcast on 92.7 WOBM. For more details, go to WOBM.com.